Good morning, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN. Time now for the Mayor's Report with a little twist this morning. Uh, joining me on the program is Jerry Mullins and Kyler Boer. That's right. Our newest addition uh, to the city of Troy. Jerry, we're going to start with you first, our street foreman here in town. Uh, we've got uh, the city cleanup is getting ready to take place. Right, the spring cleanup, we do it every year. Uh, this year it on, starts on April the 9th and runs to the 13th. And what that means is on, during your regular trash day, we don't hold you to the uh, everything has to be in the cart uh, rule that we have now. We'll have extra trucks out, so if you need to put out extra bags, you're more than welcome to do that, and someone will be by to pick them up. You, we just ask that you put them behind the cart, uh, along with any special trash that you would have, couches, chairs, things of that nature. Uh, it still doesn't mean you can put anything you want out in boxes, or you can just drag, you know. Drag the garage out and yeah, stick it next to the road. It still has to be in bags, manageable bags you can pick up and throw away, but we really kind of bend the rules for that week and let people do some extra cleaning. Well, it gives everybody a chance. You've been cooped up all winter long, and you might have got new furniture, or, right. you you know, it's that clean-out time when you're looking at stuff and saying, I haven't touched that for five years. I just moved. I know how that goes. Right. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, it, it usually goes pretty well each year. Uh, the citizens do, do a good job of just getting the trash bags out, and I just don't want to go through that frustration of where they drag anything out there and then they just have to call and we have to tell them we're not taking that it has to be in bags so you put whatever you can get in your cart put whatever you got left in bags and we'll, we'll gladly pick it up for but you. if you've got uh, couch chairs oh, yeah. something large that uh, folks are looking to get rid of um, and if they're still in good shape instead of taking it out to the curb and putting it out for large trash they should be calling uh, Goodwill yep. or uh, the Restore here in town. Right. And if it still has some life left in it, uh, let it be used. That's a good point because during this time of year, we usually pick up people's clothes that you know they, that they put out bags of clothes, and you can take that stuff to the Salvation Army or the Goodwill, and they'll gladly take it off your hands and put it to good use. But if for some reason you just want to throw it away, we'll we'll pick it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, also, we've got the Dye Mill Road facility is open now. Yeah, it, it's been open for a couple of weeks. We've already had quite a few people uh, down there. It is a great, uh, uh, you know, service that you can take any of your brush, any of your rocks, dirt, grass, um, any of those tall pompous grass that you might not have cut down in the fall. You can cut that down, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can take it down there. And that's all free. You just show your driver's license to the guy at the, at the guard shack, and then he'll point you in the direction where you go. You need to dump. But you can also get tea bags, and you can put because it's that time of year people are starting to do your spring, sto yep. spring storms or cleaning out the flower beds right. from the holidays and all the snow and everything that's blown in there and yeah it's Leaves time to get we weren't able to get out in the fall so yeah the tea bags are on sale at true value you can also pick them up at our billing collection office at 100 south market street and uh, that, those bags you put them out on your trash day and we pick those up. And we ask that any grass clippings or small items be placed in those bags. Uh, but if you do have larger items and you don't have the ability to get them to the dump, you can cut them up into four-foot lengths and tie them tightly with string, and, and we'll grab those tall or those long limbs for you also. Okay. Well, perfect. Also, as I said with us this morning is Kyler Boer. Uh, this is our new director of golf over at Miami Shores. Yes, sir. Uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us so everyone knows a little bit about you. Sure. Um, well, I am originally from this area. I grew up in Pleasant Hill and uh, went to Newton High School once upon a time. Uh, for the last, uh, I haven't, you know, so I, I haven't lived here for about 10 years. The last five years I've been uh, in Colorado, uh, out in the mountains, uh, working at a course out there called River Valley Ranch. And uh, kind of prior to that, um, I uh, spent uh, spent a short time in China uh, teaching golf for a year over there, and then was in uh, California before that. So I've, I've, I've definitely been around uh, for the last maybe a decade or so. So what brought you back to Troy, Ohio? Um, well, I, I used to work in Miami Shores uh, in my younger days, and uh, was uh, you know had, had a great relationship with, uh, with with Ken Green, the recently retired director of golf. And so when this position opened back up, and I still have family in this area and uh, and a young wife, and we're kind of looking to maybe uh, settle down, and so this uh, this turned out to be a great opportunity for us. Great. Uh, what can we look uh, 
as to what is coming up over at the uh, golf course? Sure. Um, you know, I always tell people that the season really doesn't start until after the Masters. You know, people don't really turn their attention to golf until that point in time, and certainly the weather has not provided us uh, much of an opportunity for that. But uh, we, uh, Miami Shores, uh, we, have, we have quite a few leagues that, that start up in April, uh, a lot, lot of afternoon leagues, but um, a couple of those that I'd highlight. Uh, we have a very large uh, Wednesday morning senior league uh, for, for, for men looking to get involved in that. We have about 100 players in that and always looking for more. Um, and then we, we do service a couple different leagues for uh, for the Elks group and for uh, ITW and Hobart. And uh, uh, we also have a, a women's group on Tuesday mornings um, as well as a business women's group on uh, on Thursday afternoons. So there's some opportunities there uh, for those people looking to get involved and uh, get out there and play. Okay. How would they get in contact with you if they did want to get a group and come over? Sure. Well, the easiest way is going to be to call the golf shop uh, 937-335-4457 and uh, we can we can get you set up and also direct you to the right people uh, if, if that's something that people are interested in. Okay. Uh, Kyle Boer, welcome to Troy. Thank or you welcome, very much. welcome back yeah, to the area is what absolutely. I should say. Happy to be here. And uh, Jerry, as always, thank you for being on the program this morning. Thank you. Uh, anything else either one of you would like to cover? Um, I would say in addition to that, you know, for, for new golfers, right, for people who are looking to get introduced to the game, um, starting in uh, early May, uh, I'll, I'll be running a program called Get Golf Ready. And what that does is kind of pro provide an opportunity for people who maybe have never played or maybe they played a long time ago and just uh, couldn't pick it up. But uh, it's a series of classes that's really geared towards beginner golfers where I kind of walk them through, um, you know, what golf is all about and uh, how we get them onto the golf course and then obviously cover the different areas and aspects of the games and do so in an environment that's maybe not as intimidating as saying, hey, here's a club and, and let's go let's go tee it up. So. Yeah. Gotcha. That, <laughs> yeah. that sounds like the course I would need to sign up for. Yeah, exactly. First. Exactly. That's that that first class uh, starts uh, May 1st. It goes May 1st through May 4th and then uh, May 9th uh, as well. So it's kind of a, a series of five classes um, that uh, introduces people to the game in a non-threatening sort of way. As my nephew once told me, I swing a club like his sister. <laughs> <laughs> I once had a coach tell me that my problem is I'm standing too close to the ball after I hit it. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I did have one thing to say about recycling. Okay. Um, we have a quarterly recycling program now that where the residents can go to the city's website and see a link that okay. you can click on and you can answer a question like why do you recycle and those then are um, we, we look at the answers that are given and we pick two or three of those answers. You have to give your address, phone number and then I'll go out and kind of watch the uh, the recycling that's placed out and we pick a winner actually and it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty nice gift that you get we just gave our first one out to uh, Danielle Metz and she lived down in Southview and it's got a hundred dollar gift card to Basil's in it Wonderful. And, some, and some sunglasses and some little coolers and things that Rumpke provides the gift bag they provide the gift card they give it to us and then it just gives a little bit of incentive uh, for people to recycle, and uh, I, 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 I hope that people will go to the website and click on the link and answer the question. You never know. I mean, I'm not going to be Ed McMahon and show up with a hundred thousand dollar check for <laughs> Publishers Clearinghouse, but a nice meal at Basil's, and uh, yeah. you get recognized at the council meeting. The mayor gives you the award, and it, it's uh, it's a pretty unique thing that uh, Rumpke and the city of Troy is working together to do. Now, you still might show up with a balloon. Yeah, we might have a balloon. I might have that. I, now, I had asked Sue a question last week, and she directed me to you that this would be the question to ask you. Now that we're into the full force into the recycling program and uh, we've got the new trash cans, how does it, uh, do you see more people doing the recycling? Because we've got those big, the big cans, and the trash cans are actually a little, a little bit smaller. So, uh, do you see the, that usage up? Actually, yeah. We, we, in fact, since we started with our trash carts, and, and I know some there was some frustration with the size of the cart. They actually are 65-gallon trash carts and 65-gallon recycling carts. They're just made a little different, so the trash cart's a little skinnier where the, the recycling cart's wider. We have delivered well over 500 additional uh, of the green recycling carts to citizens. Wow. Because they realized, well, 
well, we might not be able to get all of our trash in here, which ultimately was kind of the goal. We don't want people throwing recyclable materials away. So that, that made them think, well, I'm going to have to use utilize the recycling more. So we delivered more carts since we started the trash program than we had. Basically, everybody had one cart. We've got, we got quite a few families now that have two of the larger recycling carts. Our recycling numbers show that each year we get a report from Rumpke. Actually, we get quarterly and monthly reports that our recycling is up. And even these downtown solar cans that people see sitting around here look like little R2-D2s, um, those, those are actually probably removing somewhere between 35 and 40 percent of what used to just be green trash cans everything went wow. green. so we're taking 40 percent of the downtown trash and it's being diverted to recycling so in, in, in general Troy is, is stepping up and, and getting into the recycling world and it's uh, there's other ideas that we're looking into but for right now we're really trying to step up and you know, ultimately you want to you know zero waste don't think you'll ever see that but as we look into things and look into future and different aspects of recycling, we're always trying to figure out a way to eliminate trash and increase the recycling, and this has done that. Well, we're trying to be more mindful of, of what you do with your trash. Right. Uh, we're we're going to accumulate some, but uh, I know at home myself, as, and dividing that up, that I have more going in the recycling can than what I'm actually putting in the trash can. That's now. great. That's what we hope everybody does. All right. Well, both of you, thank you very much for being on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Kyler Boer, Director of Golf, and Jerry Mullins, our street foreman here in town. I'm Clint Myers. This has been the Mayor's Report on 1071 WTJN.